All right, folks. Well, uh, I know I've been on the uh, tractor talk subject for a while, so I'll uh, get off at it a little bit today and, uh, and uh, talk about just what's going on here on the farm a little bit and show y'all a couple of things uh, that some people have asked about. But anyway, um, I'm fixing to go uh, see drill some more seed here and uh, as you can see here I got some bags of seed I pulled out here because I told y'all in an earlier video that I was going to uh, I wanted to tell you the story behind the seed that I've got uh, now there's a bag of crimson clover here Oregon grown uh, so that's what I've been putting out at about five pounds of the acre with this orchard, fescue orchard grass mix I got. Now, this bag, both these bags, the big white bag and this bag here, are not 100% fescue. Uh, they just happen to be in these bags from the seed cleaner. Uh, what this is is an individual in Tennessee that has got a strain of fescue slash orchard grass uh, that is uh, it's been growing without having had been re ha without having to have been reseeded for a couple of generations so years um, and uh, what this guy he's, he's got several Massey Ferguson combines believe it or not older ones uh, and uh, when I was up there getting the seed, I was talking to him, you know, he was like, well, it's just hard to get one of the newer combines. It's, you know, mainly for the grains because the the older ones he's used to do so good at cleaning uh, these fine grass seeds. But anyway, uh, so this individual has this, he, he picks it so it's naturally a mix of fescue and orchard grass. And he carries it, he brings it back into Alabama to a seed cleaner and has it cleaned two different ways. Then he carries it back and he actually sends the seed off, has it tested for germination and what percentage orchard grass to fescue it is, etc. So this is what I've been planning. Uh, <clears throat> I've been putting out this, uh, this mix, uh, this fescue orchard grass mix, at about 20 to 25 pounds of acre. I've made some adjustments here and there, but that, that's about where I'm, I'm somewhere in there. It's a 23 pound of the acre. I think I got it set somewhere like somewhere around there right now. Then the orchard grass at five pounds of acre. So uh, not the orchard grass, the crimson clover at five pounds of acre. Um, so why do I have these two different bags here? Uh, well, they're both an orchard grass fescue mix. The mix in this bag is only about seven to nine percent orchard grass to the fescue. This bag here is somewhere around twenty to twenty-five percent orchard grass to fescue. So he he naturally charged a little more for this bag of seed than the other. I think about ten dollars more bag for the uh, higher rate of orchard grass. So what I decided to do, I knew I needed so many bags. I said, well, shoot, I'm just going to buy half of one, half the other, and when I put them in the drill, I'm just going to mix them, which will get me... Because I wanted to have... I already had in mind uh, a uh, particular rate of orchard grass I wanted mixed in this uh, fescue, and uh, the 25% was a little bit higher than I needed, but the 79% was a little bit low. So when I was talking to him, I was like, well, shoot, I'll just mix them together, and that'll put me about where I want to be, which would be, you know, somewhere around 15% orchard grass uh, to the fescue. And uh, so that's what I've been doing. There's one drawback to that, and I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but, uh, you know, I was just going to go to the co-op, buy some fescue, buy some orchard grass, and mix the ratios that I needed. Uh, I wasn't going to put one whole bag fescue to one whole bag orchard grass obviously. It's a, it's a, it'd be a little bit different. Uh, the, the seeding rates between orchard grass and fescue are different. Uh, so you don't mix them 50-50. You gotta, you gotta mix them 
uh, you know, more uh, 2080 or, you know, it, it, it depends a little bit on where you are and what you want to do. This is a mix that I've done before. Now, I've not used this guy's seed yet. It's the first time I use this guy's seed. But of the hay sales that I make, fescue, orchard grass, clover mix is what everybody almost demands the next year after they've had it a year. Uh, and I've got a few fields of it. And uh, our fact, I'm going to one of those fields now. I'm actually going to reseed that field. The drought hurt that field pretty bad this year, and uh, it's a pretty big field. And uh, I just want to ensure that I've got that stand again next year. And it's been, oh goodness, five or six years since I seeded that. So it was about time. There was no clover in that field this year. Uh, I don't know what happened. The crimson clover is usually only an annual uh, seed, but I get enough seed off the clover when I mow it. I mow it just late enough. The clover's still good for hay, but I get enough dry seed in there, it falls on the ground, and I get a stand the next year, and that's worked out real well for me. And as, as some of you know, and if you don't, crimson clover puts nitrogen in the ground. So when I go in there and cut that, it really helps my second cut. I get a, I get a pretty luscious second cut off some of those fields. So that is my reasoning behind this mix. Now, why did I buy the seed from this guy and not go get it from the co-op? Well, he's just across the Tennessee line uh, from me, and which is not all that far. He's, he's about an hour, hour and 15 minutes drive from me, uh, straight line left. But he's kind of known for this, this strain of orchard grass that he's got. And it being it, it is it has been established so long that it's become um, it's uh, it, it has gotten uh, um, oh what's the word I'm looking for it's gotten used to this climate a word I was trying to spit out I couldn't come up with it uh, in other words you go to a co-op or somewhere else and buy seed orchard grass fescue I don't know so much on fescue, but on the orchard grass, it's shipped in from either other countries or states up north, like this clover, like Oregon, or somewhere, you know, else. And that seed is not accustomed to this climate or surviving in this climate, and it only lasts a few years, and it kind of dies out. But this guy's uh, orchard grass has gotten tolerant to this environment. So he's, he's close enough to me that we have very similar weather patterns. Uh, now he's a little bit, which we're in the hills here. He's in, he's in a little bit of some hills there. He's, he's about central Tennessee, not, not east Tennessee. He's not west. He's about central Tennessee. So he's almost due north of me. And, you know, I, I, I ran across him. Actually, I had a, another uncle that had got some of his seed last year and really liked it. So that's kind of how that I got the contact there. But I thought, well, that sounds like worth trying. I just want to see how many years it holds up because, like I said, that last I planted was five, six years ago. I just went to the co-op, got seed, didn't think nothing about it, and of course it just it slowly kind of died out. So you know the heat and, and weather down here is different from where it was grown so this seed hopefully being more accustomed to this environment will hold up a little bit longer so that's the long story behind this seed now i did say there was a drawback to this uh if i can get up here oh I need to let it down there's a drawback to this uh this seed uh, he does have it cleaned and the the reason he comes up with the two different rates of fescue to orchard grass is the fact that they have to adjust the cleaner to get the orchard grass and uh, it's kind of hard I don't even know on this camera if you can see it but uh, it's, it, it, orchard grass and fescue seed are uh, 
very similar. If you can see that seed right at the end of my thumb, there's an orchard grass seed right there. It's got kind of a little husk on each side. Well, it's going away. Well, it's gone. But anyway, um, there's one there. But uh, they're in here. But what I was getting at is uh, they have to change the cleaner to get the higher rate of orchard grass. And because of that, they get a little stalk like in here like there. Well, I lost it. There it is. It just sounded a very big one, but there's a piece of piece of stalk there. And uh, that was the drawback. It, it, it would really probably be better to put out in the spin spreader uh, that rate. But uh, I told him I'd take the risk and see if it fed through the drill okay. And I, so far, see, there's a longer piece there of stalk. And it's, 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 it's brittle. It goes through the seed cups fine. Uh, and I haven't had any problem in the seed cups. You know, it's got a few little bits and pieces of stuff in here. But, uh, it, uh, it has done okay until my last run I made last weekend. I'm trying to find one of the orchard grass seeds in here. Uh, they're really hard to tell. <laughs> but they're here. Um, so, uh, it had been fine. And I planted several acres. I'm right down to my last. I think other than these bags of seed I showed you, I got like two bags left. That's how that's all I got left of it. And uh, I actually took the Donahue gooseneck up there and got about half the trailer load of that seed. But uh, anyway, um, the last uh, half of the field I did last Sunday night when I got done, I had two of my uh, seed tubes. Uh, I'll show you in a minute, stopped up, and uh, they were stopped up down at the bottom at the openers where the, um, those little pieces of stalk had built up and uh, stopped up my tube. So I'm about to go through here in a minute, when I get done with this video, I'm going to run a wire up in there, and I'm going to get a little wire with a hook I can go up in there, I'll pull down, and I'll make sure all those are cleaned out, but... Uh, that was the only drawback to that, getting that high rate uh, of uh, orchard grass mix. And uh, also I've noticed something about that mix. Because it has the higher rate of uh, orchard grass, it, you know, I can, I can't find a what of it, but it, ha it has a different feel to it. Um, it, uh, I don't know how, I don't know what the right word to describe it is, but it don't, it, it, like it don't feed very good. I had not any trouble with it. Here's some, I can feel it. It gets kind of, it gets kind of cakey like, packy. I don't know if you can see that, but it, uh, it, it just has a different feel to it. It's just hard for me to explain, but, you know. So hopefully it's good seed. You know, there's another little piece of stalk. But, uh, um, like I said, hopefully it'll, it'll come up and germinate good and uh, I'll get that mix of uh, fescue and orchard grass that I want. Uh, none of it's come up yet. I mean, we just got a rain. We got a rain. Uh, we just got a rain uh, Thursday, day Saturday. We got about half an inch, so we need more, but I'll take it. Um, so I should start seeing that stuff popping up here pretty soon. But, like I said, I've been very worried about how late in the year it is. Um, we, uh, I got out to my truck this morning, which is about 7.30. Uh, had a guy come and look at the grain auger, which he bought, by the way, so it's gone. Um, got out the truck, it was 36 degrees, 
and I had a light frost on my windshield. As uh, a matter of fact, the guy come get the uh, grain auger said he had a light frost on his windshield also. So, uh, and he's about 20 minutes to my east. Uh, but anyway, it's it's going to warm back up. We we had a little cold front come through and it's going to rebound. But I mean, we're getting to that time of year where we're going to start getting these little cold fronts. And I mean, we're almost in November, so. I'm very worried about getting this stuff up before we get a get a frost. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna get this seed out, and uh, I'm probably gonna buy some rye and put on some fields I got left. Cop told me I could put rye out to about the end of November, so uh, and I'll probably mix some clover in with that too. But that'll be it. And I'll, just to try to get something off those fields. Uh, next spring, uh, next spring, before I go and put probably some warm season grasses in, I may do a Bahia uh, Bermuda mix. I have I have done that mix with some pearl millet and had hay running out of my ears one year on one field. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, the seed tubes, uh, what stopped up? I've already cleaned them out, but they stopped up right down here. This is where the seed tube clamps on to the there's a plastic piece that runs down in here at an angle well so i kind of sort of you can see it right through there maybe but it runs down through here and drops the seed between these two blades you can see you got a little flap there and there's a piece i can't get it get a camera shot of it let me see if i can pull it up you can see it there. That's where the seed comes out. Anyway, it stopped up right here. So I gotta go through and check all those here in a minute. Uh, but uh, the drill is doing okay so far. Uh, no issues with it. Uh, and, uh, you know, I have it hooked to the 5065E. I'm still getting used to rolling that number off my tongue. Uh, I just had to hood up. I was checking the fluid, checking for any, any major leaks or anything. Uh, like I said, it it got a slight bath on the front, but the other half of it was in the shed, so uh, rain blew in on it a little bit. But uh, nothing major. I can see a little bit of stuff around. This uh, looks like uh, the uh, fuel pump or the main... Uh, I don't want, I guess you could call it injection bump, but this is a common rail. There's the common rail right here in the fuel lines coming off because this has electronic injection now. So, uh, I see a little build up, but it's, it, it's kind of hard on a new, new item. You know, sometimes there's some oil and stuff that they use in assembly and grease and things and, uh, until you really give it a good bath. It's hard to know if it's really a leak or not. Uh, right here, I don't like where this dipstick is. It's really tight here, and I've got the loader off now. With the loader on here and that frame, you can barely get to the dipstick very good. But uh, there's some buildup right here around. I believe that's the hydraulic flow return, most likely. Yeah, it wouldn't be a high-pressure side because uh, there's those hose clamps right here. But I don't know if that's from assembly. I mean, it ain't getting any worse. Uh, but, you know, a little bit of build up right there. Uh, going around the back, other than just here where I've unhooked and hooked hydraulics, I don't really see. I mean, it's completely coated in dust. Um, but, uh, anyway, uh, you know, I just had, just was looking around it for a minute. Uh, yeah, the grain auger's gone. Yeah, I have a long sleeve shirt on. It's a little chilly today. There's a Donahue still here. If you want it, contact me. <laughs> uh, I did some bush hogging this morning. 6415 around some fields I wanted to do. Uh, had one of you ask me about my gooseneck trailer, my new to me gooseneck trailer. I told you I'd try to get you a video of it. It is a lone wolf. I prefer a lair mower. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. I like lair mowers. I know the lair mowers. Uh, but uh, anyway. Uh, like I said, this was a good friend of mine's dad's trailer. Uh, and uh, I uh, 
I borrowed this trailer several times from him when I was doing a lot of square bells. And, um, you know, it ain't a bad trailer. Uh, but uh, they, since their dad had passed away, the only person that ever used it was me when I'd borrow it. So they, they kind of wanted to get rid of it. And, uh, you know, I thought I could get my money back out of my other trailer, which I did. And uh, so I said, well, if I can do that, I'll buy buy else trailer. So that's what wound up happening. Uh, this trailer does have the deal jacks, uh, which is good. It does not have a chain box. It has a chain tray uh, or basket here, I guess you could call it. Um, you know, my other trailer, I had put a, uh, had a box under here, a big box, sealed watertight box to keep my straps and stuff in it. I may do that again on this. I don't, I don't know if I'll do as big a one, but I may put one on here. Oh, uh, got the spare tire and mount. So, put that in. They didn't even have that on there. I put that on after I, I bought it. Uh, they had the spare tire. The mount was already there. Uh, here's a new hay fork that came with the uh, 5065E and the H240 loader. I have not even used it yet. Uh, they were going to sell me a bucket, and I told them, well, I don't need two buckets. And uh, I, uh, I said, but I could use a second hay fork, because there's times if I got two people, we could move hay with two tractors. So that's what they did. Now, they, they, I thought it was going to be like my other hay fork, which is sitting over there, but it's not. It's got these long uh, spears on it. So instead of having one... Shoot a long spear in the center and two short spears at the bottom. I've got three long spears, so I don't have one like that. Uh, I have a hard enough time getting my spear out of my some of my bales because they're so tight. I'm worried about having th three big ones in there, but we'll we'll we may see. Uh, but anyway, yes, I have another hay fork here. Uh, back to the trailer. Uh, spring-loaded ramps. This one does have the pop-up piece here in the middle. There's a little catch down there so you can kind of get you, you know, a few more feet of flat deck back here. Uh, it works good for uh, uh, rolls of hay. It does not work well for square bales uh, just because there's not enough uh, support here for the bales and they'll squish in. Uh, so we found that out the hard way one day. Uh, the only gripe I have about this trailer, I've always had it about the long wolves, is how low the dovetail, I mean it is jacked up right now, the, the dovetail is really low to the ground, and uh, even the times I've barred it, it always, you go over a little uneven spot pulling in a field or something, and you drag the ground or the road or whatever, I've already dragged it since I've had it, and uh, you know, but uh, that's one gripe. Uh, the other thing on this trailer is when my uh, uh, friend's father bought it. If I remember the story correctly, he ordered this trailer uh, to be built. And he only ever had a half-ton truck. And he was only going to really use it to move hay and, and light things. So, you know, that will work. You, you don't want to load one too heavy, but you watch how you load it you can use a half ton truck with one of these you know and have a good electric brake controller but when he ordered it knowing that these axles should be a little bit further to the back of the trailer uh like my other trailers have been but they're moved forward a little bit he had to move them forward a little bit so it would put more weight on the trailer and a little less light on the truck and, and you know that's all good theory but it really doesn't work very well with that dovetail <laughs> being low to the ground because the the wheels being further forward uh if you go over an uneven spot it it, it it wants to set that dovetail on the ground more often than if they were a little bit further back but uh that's okay i mean it'll work you know like i said i prefer I prefer a layer more, but uh, that's uh, that's what I got. And like I said, I, I paid them probably 
a little more than I probably would have paid someone else for it. But it, they, it, she, she had kept, I, enclosed shed kept. That trailer is, how old is that trailer? 2007? This trailer, I believe that's right. I think this trailer's nearly 10 years old. So, I mean, young, I mean, look at it. The deck's even, the deck is, is uh, <laughs> not even weathered. Oh, uh, I'm curious. I forgot what year it was already. Yeah, 2007. All right. So, yeah, I mean, it's been kept in an enclosed shed all of its life. So, you know, it was almost like buying a new trailer. Uh, I've got an issue with the brakes on it. They don't seem like they're working quite right. But, uh, yeah, I'll look at that later. Um... So that's what's going on now. The past what five years now, this time of year, uh, I am full blown. Head is in wheat, getting wheat planted, uh, and uh, you know, getting burn downs, done fertilizer out, and everything for wheat. Well, that's not the case this year. Uh, my head is in next May. I want a hay crop, <laughs> so that's what I'm I'm doing. Uh, you know, you're you never farming for the moment. You're farming for the future. Uh, I guess is is one way I could put it. But uh, you know, everything I'm doing right now is in preparation for next spring and summer. Uh, and uh, you know, I couldn't just. There's no such thing as just oh well, I'm gonna quit row cropping. I'm gonna sit back and take a break for a few months and pick back. No, it was. It's done with row cropping. Immediately into getting these fields ready for hay next year so that's that's what i've been doing um so i just thought i'd update y'all on that a little bit uh uh the massey is still here i got it parked here now it's trying to fit everything in the shed yes that is my boat i've yet to decide if i want to do a video on that boat yet or not other than what you just seen y'all can let me know uh, I told y'all the other day I had a whole nother saga on a whole nother farm un, unfarm related item and that's it, it is this boat uh, I, uh, I purchased this uh, back in the summer and uh, other than a couple of weeks that I had it it uh, has been gone until this past Wednesday. So, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. I might, uh, I might do a boat tour. I, when you get on YouTube and look at boats, people like to do boat tours. I mean, this is nothing. This is not a big, expensive fiberglass boat or anything, but it is a nice boat. And uh, as I mentioned to y'all before, I love the bass fish. I don't get to go as often as I like to, but uh, cut back on the farm. This was one of the one of the things I had told the family I wanted to do is uh, have a little bit more time to uh, actually take a break and, and go do something I enjoy every now and then. So, uh, and I've always tried to keep a boat around since about 2004. Uh, there's been some some periods where I hadn't had one, but I've, I've almost always kept one and. Uh, I sold my other boat back last winter and hadn't had one, and I ran across this one, and I got a good deal on this boat. Uh, that's the one I bought it, but uh, there's a story behind that, but uh, I, it turned out being problematic, too, in a, in a number of ways, but uh, hopefully all that is resolved now. But, uh, yeah, I have spent 30 minutes in this video. I need to be in the field. Um... So I'm going I'm to get this seed in here and, uh, and get this thing fueled up and get to the field. And uh, anyway, I thought I'd give y'all an update, walk around on what's uh, going on. There ain't nothing else really that's new here. Uh, the uh, Peckway Tetter, you may have caught a glimpse of it, it's sitting over there. I have got another video I want to do um, regarding uh, Peckway. 
Uh, and I did get to see them at the uh, Sunbelt Ag Expo also, so that was good. But, uh, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. So, thanks for watching, and I'll give you another update when I got one. See ya.